Good morning. Welcome to our English lesson today. It is a continuation of the Monday's lesson, Active and Passive Voice. And on Monday, I talked about the present tense, the present simple tense, the present continuous tense, and the present perfect tense, and how you are going to change the, past, the present tenses to the, from the active voice to the, passive vo to the passive voice. In our lesson today, we are going to deal with the past tense, past simple past tense, uh, the, pa the past continuous and the past perfect and how we are going to change these sentences from this active voice to the uh, passive voice. And I say the active voice is when the subject is the main focus of the sentence, whereas the passive voice is when the object receiving the action becomes the main focus of a, sender, of a sentence. So without further ado, active voice, the past simple tense, past simple tense. If you have the active voice in the past simple tense, it is going to change if it changes to the passive voice, it's going to change to the past participle by use of past auxiliary was or wa, was or wa. Example in a sentence, I'm going to say, say food, uh -huh. food. No, I'm going to say Amina. I'm, I'm going to say Amina ate food. Amina ate food. Ate food. Amina ate food. This is a pre, uh, this is a past a simple te, a simple past te, a past this is a simple past tense eat. The past tense of the word e of the word eat. So if I want to change this act if eat from the active voice, you are going to change past participle by use of past auxiliary was or wa. What does that mean? It is going to depend on the receiver of the action. If the receiver of the action, which is the object, is going to be the main focus in the passive voice, then it, if it is singular, it takes was, and if it is plural, it takes wa. Example, Amina ate food. In the passive voice, we are going to say, in the passive voice, we are going to say, food, uh -huh, food was eaten, food was eaten, by Ami, by Amina. And I said you can eliminate Amina and the sentence will still be correct, will still be correct. So you are going to say food was eaten by Ami, Amina. You use a past participle, and I have a past party, a past participle which is eaten, is the past participle of the word eat, symbol present tense eat, past symbol is et, and then the past participle is eaten, is eaten. So et, which is the past symbol tense, changes to, if it is in the active, it changes to the passive by use of what? Past participle by use of past auxiliary was or wa, was or wa. So I'm having amina ed food. This is the past symbol, the active voice. I want to change this sentence to the passive voice. I'm going to say food was eaten by amina. Food was eaten by amina. So was is the past, the past auxiliary. Hel auxiliary is simply a helping verb, a helping verb. So you have was eaten, and then eaten is the past party, past participle of the word a, eh, part of the word it. You change the past symbol to the passive. Make sure you use the past participle by use of past auxiliary was or wa. And I said was is singular and wa is plu, is plural. So for example, you can come up with another sentence and say, Amina ate mangoes. Amina ate. Amina ate mangoes. Mangoes is plural, so in my passive voice I'm going to say mangoes. I'm going to say mangoes were, mangoes were eaten. I'm having wa, and then I'm having eaten in my sender, in my senders. What does that make the sentence? If this is plural, it takes a plural helping, a plural auxiliary verb, past auxiliary verb wa. If the sentence here is singular, if the receiver of the action is singular, like in our first sentence, Amina ate food, then we are going to say food was eaten. Was is the past auxiliary singular. singular. Our next one is the past continuous tense. Past continuous tense. How do you form the past continuous tense? The past continuous tense is formed by was, singular, wa plural by use of ie by use of ing so example in a sentence i can say amina uh -huh, amina was eating amina was eating food amina was eating food you look at my sentence i'm having was uh -huh, plus ie plus ing was is singular singular Referring to the food, Amina with a singular subject, Amina with a singular subject. So if you want to change the past continuous tense, a uh, past continuous tense active voice into the past con into the past continuous tense passive. You change the past continuous to a past participle by use of auxiliary being. By use of auxiliary what? Being. You just remember that. Even if it is in this in the simple present tense, 
pre simple present tense continuous. You change the simple present tense to the past to the uh, passive voice. Remember to use the uh, mod, uh, the auxiliary verb what be being b e i n i n g. So here I'm going to say Amina was was. I mean, I was eating food. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say, food was, example, food was being eaten uh -huh, by Ami, Amina. Food was being eaten by who? By Amina. So I have was, which is the pa was in my sentence, plus being, uh -huh, plus eaten. Past participle by use of auxiliary be, by use of auxiliary being. What is the past participle of the word eat? Eat, eh? Eaten. So my sentence would be correct if it reads, food was eaten by Ami. Food was being eaten by Amina in the passive, in the passive voice. When changing the past continuous, how do you form the past continuous tense? Use of was or wa. Use of what? It can be formed by was or wa. If it is was, I said it's singular. If it is wa, it is blue. It is plural. Food, Amina was eating food. Now, if I'm going to change this into the passive voice, I'm going to use a past participle by the use of auxiliary what? Be, being. And I said auxiliary is simply a helping verb. A helping verb. So my sentence we read, food was being eaten by Ami, by Amina. Food was being eaten by who? By Amina. Ah, yeah. When you come to the past perfect tense, when you come to the past perfect tense, how do you form the past perfect tense? The past perfect tense is formed by head plus a past party plus a past participle. You form the past perfect tense by use of had plus a past participle, a past participle. So example, in, if you want to change the past perfect to the, uh, from the active voice to the passive voice, it simply remains the past participle plus a linking verb, head be, plus the linking verb, head been. Example, in a sentence, I'm going to say, uh -huh, I'm going to say, Amina, example, Amina had eaten, Amina had eaten mango, mangoes. Amina had eaten what? Mangoes. Amina had eaten mangoes. Now, I want to change this sentence from the, pa from the past perfect the past perfect a sentence from the past perfect active to the passive voice to the passive voice he said how do you do you form the passive pa past perfect tense it is formed by had plus a past party a past participle that means you should know the past participle of verb of verbs so i'm using eden which is the past participle of the word e which is the past participle of the word it i have had so i'm having had plus eaten which forms the past perfect past perfect tense I want to change this past perfect tense to the past uh, to the past participle from the to the passive voice. What am I going to use? You simply have a past participle plus a linking verb had be had been. Example in a sentence I said Amina had eaten mangoes. Amina had eaten mangoes. If I want to change this sentence to the passive voice, I'm going to say so mangoes becomes the main focus of the sentence which wa which was the receiver of the action in the active vo in the active voice. I say I'm going to say mangoes mangoes uh -huh, had been mangoes had been eaten mangoes had been eaten you can add by amina if you want or you can you, you, the sentence still is the sentence still right if you don't add by ami by amina if you want you can add by ami by amina but the sentence will still be correct without it so you say mangoes had been mangoes had been eaten mangoes had been what eaten so and you're changing the past perfect tense to the passive voice, you simply use a past participle plus a linking verb, had be, had been. Amina had eaten mangoes. Amina had eaten mangoes. I'm changing this to the passive voice. I'm saying mangoes had been eaten, mangoes had been eaten. And I said you can say mangoes had been beaten by Ami, by Amina if you want, or you still can omit that part of the sentence and the sentence will still be correct. The sentence will be still correct. So you have this, this is the past tense. I talked about the present tense. Now this is the past tense. Let's talk about the future simple tense. How do you form the future tense, future simple tense? So the future simple tense is formed by use of will or shall, uh -huh. use of will or shall plus a symbol, plus a simple tense, plus what? A simple tense, a simple tense. Now, how and do you use will? How do you, how do we use will and shall in sentences? In sentences. 
is how we do it. First person, singular and plural, take shall. First person is I and we, is going to take shall, is going to take shall. And then second person, which is you, singular or plural. And then third person, singular female, is a she. Mm -hmm. Singular male is a he. And then if you can either go to in other inanimate objects or animals, you use it. And then the plural is what? The plural is they. These ones are going to take what? To take we? To take we. Pay that, uh, you, you should pay attention to this. First person, I and we, takes shall, takes shall in your sentence. And then you, she, he, it, and they. They is the plural of all of we, of she, he, and he, and it. So they is the plural, and then they take what? They take will in their sentences, in their sentences. Whereas I and we, first person, singular, and plural, takes what? Takes shall, takes shall. Now, Let's come up with a sentence to, to show how the how to form to form how to form what the future present eh? present tense. For example, I can say I shall mm -hmm, I shall eat mango mangoes. I can say what I shall eat mango I shall eat mangoes. So I is the first person singular, and then we have shall plus it, which is the symbol of te, which is the simple tense, it, present simple tense. You have e, it. So I have shall plus it, which is forming my future simple tense, my future simple tense. How am I going to form the passive voice of the future simple tense? You form the passive voice of the future simple tense, which takes an auxiliary be with past participle of the symbol verb, is the symbol verb. Now, it takes an auxiliary be with a past participle of the symbol verb, of the symbol verb. Now, you have this. I shall eat food. I shall eat mangoes. So eat is the symbol tense. You know you have to change it into the past. See, into the past symbol. And remember to use what to use be in the sender in the sentence. Now, how am I going to the, to change this into the passive? I have mangoes. Mangoes are going to be the main focus of my sentence in the next word in the passive voice. The passive voice. So we say. So we say. I shall eat mangoes. Uh -huh. You say mangoes. Mangos, which is it in my sentence. Mangos, which is what? It, when you come here. So here my sentence is I shall, because it is first person. But then the receiver of the action is mangos. Third person, it. It takes will. So you are going to say mangos. Uh -huh. Mangos will be eaten. Mangos will be eaten. Uh -huh. By what? Mangos will be eaten by? By me. I said you have the I, which is subjective, nominative, and then by me, which is objective, which is objective. So if you have that, I changes to, to me. Look at my sentence. I shall eat mangos. I shall eat mangos. I have shall in my sentence because I is the first person. And I say the first person, I and we, takes shall, shall. But now when I'm changing my sentence to the passive, I have mangoes which are going to be the main focus of my sender, of my senders, and mangoes are third person, that person, it, that person what, it, it refers to all inanimate objects, food, animals, stones, pens, so if your noun in a sentence take a pronoun, it, then it is going to change to we, it's going to take the future, t symbol, uh, the future, what, the future symbol, the future symbol tense we will. So you are going to say, mangoes will be eaten by by me. Mangoes will. Although in the first sentence I had shy, I had shy. You just check if the receiver of your action takes will or takes shy text will or text sharp. So if you have the future symbol tense, you want to change it into the into the passive voice. It takes an auxiliary text it takes auxiliary B with a past participle of the symbol verb of the symbol verb. You have mangoes will be eaten by mangoes will be eaten by me. Okay, so from the future symbol tense and how to change the future simple tense to the passive future simple tense active to the passive voice, I've said use what? Auxiliary verb, use take an auxiliary B this is B with the past participle of the symbol verb of the symbol verb. So if you have the symbol verb here is it. My symbol verb was it here. I've changed the symbol verb to the past party to the past participle by use of B. So I've said mangoes will be eaten by me. Now you go to the future perfect tense, future perfect tense. How do you form the future perfect tense? The future perfect tense is formed by shall or it can be also formed by shall or will plus her plus her. Now, how do you change the future perfect uh, tense from the active voice to the passive voice? From future perfect tense from the active voice to the passive voice. You simply use the auxiliary verb be. You simply use the auxiliary verb being. Look at the example in my sentence. 
we shall have eaten mangoes. We shall have eaten mangoes. So I'm having sha plus have, which is forming my future perfect tense. Eh? My future perfect tense. We shall have eaten mango, mangoes. Now, if I want to change my active voice to the passive, I'm simply going to insert an auxiliary verb be been. B double E A double B double B double B double E N. Now, my passive voice is going to read mangoes, which is third person. It takes we, it takes will. But remember, my sentence began with we shall, which is first person plural, takes shall, takes shall. But the focus of my, second, my active voice in my passive voice sentence is going to be mango, mangoes. So if the focus of my uh, passive voice is mangoes, then mangoes are third person. That person, person, it is what? They, right? So mangoes are third person, they, and what do they take? They take a what? A we? A will, not a sha? A sha. Now, you are going to say, mangoes will have, mangoes will have been eaten by us. Mangoes will have been eaten by us. So I'm simply inserting been in my sentence, in my sentence. That's why I'm saying use of auxiliary be, use of auxiliary been. You have mangoes will have been eaten by us. Mangoes will have been eaten by us, uh, by us. You are changing the future perfect tense, which is formed by will or shall, plus her, plus have. So we shall have, we shall have eaten mangoes. So I'm having shall plus have, which is forming my future perfect tense, my future perfect tense. And then when I want to change this to the passive, I simply insert an auxiliary bin. I said an auxiliary is simply a helping verb, another name of helping verbs. So I'm going to say mangoes will have been eaten by us, by us. Mangoes will have been eaten by what? By us. Now, you might find out that if you don't follow or if you don't listen to this video keenly and make some notes, you'll end up making mistakes. Especially when it is changing active voices to the passive voice, to the passive voice. If you want to do this correctly, listen and make notes. Where you don't understand, pause and go back. Then listen again, make notes. Make short notes so that when you give, I give out exercise and you're supposed to answer the questions, you do the correct thing, do the correct thing. These sentences do not change in the same way. If the sentence is in the, in, in the, in the, symbol, in the present tense, it is very different. If the sentence is in the past tense, it is very different. If the sentence is in the future tense, it is very different. different. Especially when it comes to the future tense, will, use of will and shall. Use of will and shall. If you can't identify a first person and you can't identify a second person, a third person singular and plural, then you realize that when it comes to changing these sentences from the active to the passive voice, it is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. I urge all of you to listen to this make notes. If you don't understand anything, you can ask. Then I'm going to give out the exercise. And when you do the exercise, you send the exercise plus the answers. Don't just send answers. Have a good day.